Hey, what is up you guys and welcome back to my channel and in today's video I'm going to be testing out the sublimation on cotton using DTF powder. So the film that I'm going to be using is this brand here. It is the Off Nova brand. They sent me these to test out. Now I do have a DTF printer but I also have a sublimation printer so I want to try out this hack that I've been seeing on TikTok and on YouTube just to see if it actually works. So I'm going to be printing, doing the curing method and also washing we're going to do a wash test to see if it actually holds after you wash it so that you can get a thorough idea of what it's really like and, the, and if it actually works before you go out and try it and this is the film that i'm going to be testing on it comes in 8.5 by 11 which is your standard letter size for a um pretty much every printer now my dcf printer does have the capability of printing bigger sizes so i'm not sure if this brand has bigger films if you have a dcf printer and you want to have bigger film sheets so I'm going to do some research on that, but for now we're going to test out this on the sublimation printer and then I'm also going to do a video testing it out at my DTF printer just so you guys can see how it works for both. So if you would like to see if this hack actually works, of course just stick around and I will definitely give you my thorough thoughts and opinions. We have our film here and one thing that I noticed that these um, film did not come with instructions. So there's a glossy side. I don't know if you can see it on camera. And then there's a matte side. And just because I'm familiar with DTF film, you typically, typically are going to print on the matte side. So that's the way you want to load it into your printer. And then your design, you want to be sure that it is mirrored. So we're going to go ahead and load our film and then we're going to begin to print. So here is the print and I do see where it's kind of like bubbled up a little bit if that's the way to use to describe it. It's not like a flat surface if you can see it on camera. So I don't know if that means I printed on the wrong side. And so this is the film after it has been powdered and you just want to be sure to cover all of the image and then shake away the excess and then the next step would be to cure it so this looks the same the way the image turned out is the same way with the spots on it so i'm assuming that the print side is actually the matte side and that it looks like this because it is sublimation ink i'm going to do some research to see which is the printing side and then I'll let you all know. Okay, you guys, so I went ahead and cured the transfer and this is what it looks like as of now. It's kind of washed out. And as you can see, I noticed that my printer has these black lines that it's printing. And I had that issue with one of my old sublimation printers. So I'm going to attempt to do a cleaning for it so it doesn't continue to do those streaks. That's actually why I upgraded to this EcoTank printer because my other Epson Workforce 7710 was having that issue on all of my prints to where it was printing those lines. Um, so I'm gonna check and see why it's doing that. But other than that, here is how it looks. You can still see the blotches in the, in the design. And I'm pretty sure you'll be able to see that whenever you press it but as you can see it doesn't have that powdery texture anymore it's cured and if you're wondering the difference between this and the DTF transfer here is a side-by-side -side comparison you can see it you can see that the DTF transfer um, prints white and the sublimation printer doesn't print white and I did use two different brands of transfer film so that's another thing and then on the back you can see it has like a well you probably can't see it but it has like it should have an orange peel effect texture but these are the two differences this is one I did on my sublimation and this is the actual DTF printer so we're gonna go ahead and press this one to see how it turns out and we're gonna do the wash test that will be the last step that I'm going to do and then I'm gonna show you 
show you all after it is been washed and so you can get a thorough idea and right now i'm just waiting for my heat press right here to finish heating and i'm going to be pressing this on a white shirt just so you can um so the design will look better simply because it doesn't print white and the design actually does have white in it so we'll use this shirt as soon as my heat press heats up hey okay, guys so my heat press is finally heated and now this will be the moment of truth so let's see how this turns out and the instructions that i found online which weren't very good it said you could warm or cold peel which is very um strange because most of the times the film is either going to be warm cold or hot peel so we're just going to cold peel just because i did some more research on amazon and the the reviews were saying to cold peel it so let's go ahead and press it And with my other transfer films, I typically do about 10 to 15 seconds. And if you were wondering, this film is not very, to me, it lacks instructions, which wouldn't be helpful to a beginner. But simply because I have experience with a DTF printer, I'm pretty familiar. So we're going to allow this to cool before we peel it. Yeah, so you definitely should allow it to cool. I just did a lift test and you can kind of see the design starting to lift. So you do want to let it cool. Okay, so now that it has cooled, we'll go ahead and peel it. So here is the final product. And typically with sublimation, you wanna have your heat press between 385 to 400 degrees, but my heat press is set to 310 and it printed just fine. It's very vibrant. However, if you look closely, I don't know if it's showing on camera, it has some ink residue right here and it was cured. So it still has that print stuck to the shirt is very soft to touch you can see the roller lines on it and you can kind of see the blotchy areas where it was so I don't know if I would recommend this and typically whenever you do a DTF transfer you want to heat it peel it and then press it again for about five more seconds so I'm going to test that out to see hopefully it doesn't mess up the design and that's how you fully set it. So it didn't do anything to the design, but that's how you set it. So whenever you first do the transfer, you'll notice it's very soft and to touch, but you wanna press it again so that you can get that final set on your design and it doesn't feel as, you. it's not as noticeable to touch. It's more, um, it's more, pressed into the shirt and that's how you want it to be so although this shirt quality doesn't look the greatest we're still going to finish up and we're going to do our last step which is to wash it i'm going to add in a little bit of detergent and the instructions that i saw online did say to not use fabric softener which that's with most print designs you don't want to use fabric softener so we'll see how this holds up in the wash and if it does hold up well, the only thing that we'll have to tweak then is getting the design to print at a higher quality and not have the blotches on the other side. So that's our last step and I'll finish up whenever this finished washing. So this is the final result of the shirt. And you can't tell on camera, it still looks pretty vibrant, but after washing it, it does kind of fade. And you can still see the black line, of course, but the print overall itself it looks pretty good in my opinion so if i can work out the few kinks i think it will be a great method so if you're wanting to try that you will need a sublimation printer a heat press 
and some DCF film as well as the powder. I will link them down below where you can purchase. But other than that, the method works great. I hope you all enjoyed this video and I will see you all in my next upload. Bye!